expectations for them. I mean, they're going to have to play really good. I, as I said before, Posey and uh, Martin, you know, they, they can't be rookies for this team to succeed. They've got to they've got to play like veterans, and they've had a good camp. They're going to both get uh, very good opportunities. Les Star should throw in that uh, in that mix because in a lot of ways he's a first year player. So those guys will have to grow up for us real quick. And uh, you know how they play in the preseason to me says a lot about how they're going to play for us once we get going. So it's very very important for them and the team. What about even some of the second-year guys, especially like TJ, coming off the yeah. ending of the year to actually get back out there and go off yeah, that experience? Yeah, you know, uh, I think uh, we kind of remind ourselves as coaches every day that this is TJ's first training camp in pro football. And, uh, I mean, he did a lot for us last year, played in some big games, but a lot of growing pains he's still going through. I think he's having a good camp. He can improve uh, a great deal as a player, and he works at it, and I think there's no doubt he'll do that. Even with the injuries you've had so far this season, this uh, preseason, are you where you want to be going into the first first preseason game? Uh, I don't know if you're ever where you want to be. I mean, we'll, we'll go find out. I mean, we're going to play a lot of people. Uh, we've been fortunate. We've got some nicks. Everybody does, but our guys are going to be back, and so we got to make sure that happens the right way. But uh, you know, it's time to go. You know, start putting the pieces together and find out who can help us. We've got to go find five or six players uh, that can help our football team this year, just like we did last year. So it's time to go start getting that done. I mean, I'm just excited about it, you know, excited, you know, to, you know, play against a, another team, you know, just to see what I could do out there, you know, and I'm just uh, take advantage of the opportunity. you feel the pressure to step up when you're in practice, knowing that there's a spot up for you right away? I mean, you, they're not just bringing you in to develop you in one day. I mean, you've got a chance to go right away uh, with the team that looked good in the playoffs last year as a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think about the pressure that much. You know, I just go out here and play half line. You know, because, I mean, if you think about the pressure too much, that's when, you know, you start making mistakes and stuff. So, I mean, I just continue to have fun out here, continue to catch the ball. What's it like going up against the secondary? I mean, this is one of the best in the league. Coach yeah. Kubiak says it's one of the best he's ever seen as a coach. I mean, it's definitely tough, you know, going against these guys every day. You know, they're physical, you know, fast. So, I mean, you really got to be on your stuff or, I mean, it's going to be a bad day for you. But uh, I feel like I've been doing great, doing good against these guys, and I'm just ready to uh, play on Saturday. They seem to have a little extra motivation, too. Like, if they knock down a pass, you know, these guys are older guys. They've been in this league. They let you know it. You know, while you're on the ground, they walk by and tell you, not today, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Is that a little extra motivation for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's definitely, you know, just uh, coming out here. I like a every day against these guys, man. I mean, it's just amazing, you know, to have this opportunity, and uh, it's fun, man. It's fun. Well, the plan is to do better than we did last year, uh, but obviously I think the OTAs helped this year. I think for us, really, with losing D'Amico and losing Mario, I think the OTAs were important just for, from a leadership standpoint. They allowed, uh, you know, us to go out there and play and see what it's like without those guys before it was, you know, game time. Uh, so I think that's the biggest advantage that we uh, took from OTAs is just kind of seeing who was going to step up as, you know, the, kind of the leaders of the defense. Does the defense nice have a better grasp of the game? defense? Uh, well, we had a pretty good grasp of the defense last year. Um, but I think it helps the younger guys get to know it quicker, uh, you know. And we, we didn't kind of catch our groove until week six, week seven last year. And uh, with knowing the defense better now, hopefully we can start off a little quicker, a little better. You guys have a lot of pressure to be physical as well. I mean, Michael Marty came out the other day and said yeah. had that comment about what you said about practice and yeah. pads. But, I mean, yeah. you know, the, it still stands that you guys are anchoring one of the best offenses yeah. in the league. Well, I know this, you know, you don't look into 16-16. You don't look into 2,000 yards rushing as a team. You don't look into that kind of stuff. So you can call it whatever you want. You can call it finesse. You can call it whatever. But I'll take those yards. I'll take the touchdowns, and I'll take that production. So Michael Marty can call it whatever he wants. He can come out here and, you know, I've never seen him at practice before. So uh, maybe he'll have a different take on it if he's not 2,000 miles away uh, commenting on something he's never seen before. So, you know, that's kind of the old school mentality with all this as well. You know, if you're not hitting every day, if you're not doing that, then I guess you're not tough. You know, and I'm not going to worry about that. That's something that, you know, if we can go out there, we can get Arian Foster over 1,600 yards again. We can get matched out to 4,000, and we can score those big touchdowns in the key moments. Then you can call us whatever you want. And all, all I'm hearing, and I just – Coach, we got Wade Phillips and how he, how well, you know, Mark Ware developing that system. I know that uh, Mario Williams can do the same thing. Uh, you know, we, we get in. I haven't really had a chance to just really sit down and talk with him, but uh, for what I've seen, and I, I came out with him, the guy can play, man. And uh, this team is definitely going to open up a lot of things for him. We see you and Jonathan Joseph down there 
behind Kubiak, around Kubiak a lot. What sort of stuff are you and Joseph talking about? And what sort of stuff are you, are you listening to and talking about with uh, Kubiak? Well, we're just working on the defense schemes and stuff like that. We're just trying to get familiar with it. And also working on team camaraderie. I never played with Jonathan. I've seen him play before in Cincy. I played against him, and uh, he's a great football player. And we're just trying to get our camaraderie done and down and seeing what coverage we like to play on and what, how to talk about it and, you know, just little things like that. We're talking about the players on the back end that we like, you know, and then just the team, the, the organization here. Uh, you know, just this is just a great time to be, a, be playing football again. It's kind, of nat- it's kind of safe to say it's, you know, it's pretty natural that you guys are developing a, a camaraderie because you, you, know, you both signed on the same day. You both haven't been able to practice. You're, you're hanging out like that. Yeah, we just, like I said, we're knocking all those pieces out and all those bugs out and uh, we can't wait to get back. And we still got a little stall here, but hope we can get that resolved pretty soon. Amen. You said you expected to be returning kicks. There have been some successful kick returners here on the roster, but mm-hmm. you know they've also been some rule changes. You know they're moving the kickoff up a little bit mm-hmm. on, on kickoffs. How does that affect you know players' value and the way the way that you play the game and special teams? I mean, uh, I just look at it the same way it's always been. Um, you're gonna get some guys that are gonna shank the ball. It's gonna be some short kicks. Uh, in the past, I've returned balls deep in the end zone. Also, uh, coach gave me the liberty to be able to do that. So hopefully, if I'm back there returning, the coach will do the same here. You grew up in Texas, you know, you played at Abilene Christian. Like, mm-hmm. what's it like to come, you know, come back to Lone Star State? It's great. I mean, just being around my family, getting them to see me all the time, and I'm seeing, seeing them. Uh, I always tell, I'll be telling guys that I told my mom this, that uh, the quality of life is better here in Texas. So <laughs> I have to deal with all that snow all the time. So. Yeah, you spent a lot of time up in the cold. Like, how are you handling the heat coming uh, back? And it, I'm, I'm trying to get acclimated to it. It's different, uh, especially when we put those helmets and those pads on. It's going to be a lot of heat pressing down on you but I mean that's something you got to get used to those guys doing it I can do it too have you had conversations with Joe already about your own ability to do whatever not necessarily whatever you want but judgment kickoffs back there and that type of thing uh yeah we talked a little bit about it uh he, he, he definitely has uh would like for me to be back there and I think it's basically up to me and how well I pick up on the defense do you, what what's your do you have a sense for what the new rules are going to how they're going to affect things because you don't have you haven't had them without the the wedge rules in effect that distance and how it, could it be possible well, rules change for me them? rule change for me but uh twice since i've been a kick returner um the two man with three man wedge was taken out now it's just a two man wedge and now it's you know they can kick the ball they can get it close and kick the ball out the end zone and most kickers are aiming to do that do you do you, i mean do you do you understand it from the safety standpoint do you kind of feel like that's just football or? I, you, I mean we've been trying to Get that done about safety and keeping guys protected, and uh, you know that could, should be commended. Those you know guys in those front offices are trying to protect the players and give them longevity. But at the same time, it is football contact sport. It's going to happen. You know, you, no matter how far you scoot the ball up and kick, you're going to have guys getting banged. Got to make those return touchdowns worth ten now, then, right? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> you know, we got to do that. <laughs> so. Appreciate it. Man. Uh-huh. Just repetition. N- nothing. Nothing cures that but repetition. So. Um, we we, uh, we both have to get out there, and we have to get a lot of reps during practice. And we have to, um, you know, we're both uh, professionals. He's, he's been in the league a long time, and uh, you know he knows how to he knows how to practice. And I think that's what separates uh, good players from great play, great players is that they know how to practice. Does that allow you to go into that situation with a little bit more confidence, knowing, like you just said, he's a veteran A and B, he had a lot of success last year blocking for Peyton Ellis. Well, yeah, absolutely. Every, anytime you have a veteran in front of you, um, there's not much they haven't seen in this league. You know, this league throws a lot of things at you, but you know. He's been around it. He's been around systems. He's been around uh, the NFL for a while, so he knows how to work. Um, and so that's, that's all it's about right now is just uh, getting on the practice field and uh, getting reps. I realize you weren't doing any sort of hitting today, but just the opportunity to get back out there with everyone else and not be watching and not be only an active part in film session, did you just feel good to take that step forward? Yeah, you know, you know guys joke, say you got fresh legs and th- things like that. But, you know, uh, it's, it's just good to get back around, start running some plays, uh, you know, just – being in that environment just builds a camaraderie with the guys. There's just, there's just something about it, you know, um, sweating together, uh, you know, bleeding together, you know, getting getting your wind taken from you. You know, you go through all that together, and it just builds a certain uh, certain amount of respect for each other. I like everything about football, catching, blocking, running, whatever it may be. You know, I just want the opportunity to do some different things than what I did last year. I was just a straight blocker. So I, I'm happy about the opportunity to be able to run out the backfield, catch the ball, you know, make dominating blocks, block on the outside, block on the edge, just whatever it is they ask me to do. I'm here to do that. I'm ready to work, and I'm just trying to win. And they brought you in the battle right now with James Casey. Absolutely. Um, are you, I know you're battling a position for him, but it's kind of you're a teacher with them too, kind of teaching him the fullback position? You know what? I, this is my sixth year. I've been starting 
four out of the six. Uh, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to try to help as much as I can and try to learn as much as I can. You know, with the competition thing, it's always competition. You know, I had competition in Cleveland. I had competition everywhere. So competition don't bother me at all. I enjoy it. Let's go get it. Let's see who's going to do it. But I know what I'm going to go out there and do. So I'm just ready to get out there and do what I do. What sort of reaction have you gotten from your friends and your family when they found out you were coming back to Houston? Wow, congratulations. Uh, numerous things. But uh, everybody's just happy in, a, in the hole. Everybody's just happy for me, and they happy for me to be home and right up the street to where they can come see me. We got in late, but I'm guessing pretty exciting to be in an offense like this, especially Absolutely. in front of a guy like Aaron Foster. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. You know, I'm, I'm taking on a challenge, and I'm going to try to do whatever it is possible for me to succeed in the offense. For people that haven't seen you play, what type of fullback are you? Wow. I don't know what to call myself. I, I don't know what to call myself. I usually kind of go with whatever people call, but I'm a passionate football player. I love the game. I love the challenge. I love the fullback position because it's a position to where it's going to make you either a man or a cop. One of the two. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a man. I ain't never seen a cow or heard a cow or cow not in my vocabulary. Just only because I'm telling y'all right now. But, you know, I just love the position in the hole and I'm just ready to get out here and work. There's so many, uh, so many teams in the NFL that are, you know, going spread offense and everything like that. It's nice to join a Houston team that puts a premium on the fullback. Is Absolutely. It? Absolutely. I mean, the fullback get a lot of play in the offense. You know, I sat back and I watched the Texans a lot, played against them. And uh, the fullback is in the game a lot, and I like that. I want to be in the game. I feel like I can make a difference when I'm in the game. You know, and all that comes with repetition, working, coaches believing in you, you know, doing the things that they ask you to do, and just really just being a good football player. So I'm, I'm ready for everything.